restraints as resting places for their arms. They were just in space moments ago. <laughs> here at 2.57 p.m. Pacific time this afternoon. And there we go. We have visual on four healthy mains. That view was from inside. Freedom copy. That view was from inside one of the buckets where the parachutes are located. So we see a great view there of the reefing on those parachutes. And as those parachutes, those main parachutes begin to inflate fully, four beautiful, healthy names. It's incredible to think that the Dragon capsule just minutes ago was going over 17,000 17, miles per hour and now gently coasting to a soft splashdown. 200. Copy, 200 meters. Brace for splashdown. As you can see there on your screen, continuing to monitor progress of the Dragon spacecraft. And we're going to stand by for splashdown located in the Gulf of America um, off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. And splashdown, Crew 9 back on Earth. Good main release. Copy splash down. We see main shoots cut. Nick, Alex, Butch, Sunny, on behalf of SpaceX, welcome home. Part of the recovery team, those dolphins uh, <laughs> in the water there. Now the the recovery crew mem team member that is crawling around the Dragon spacecraft. Uh, earlier we saw a view where it was like a spider monkey pose. Um, we can see that individual now standing in the bucket where the main parachutes were stored while Dragon was on orbit. Obviously those main parachutes were utilized for splashdown today. Uh, they were deployed and cut from the Dragon capsule uh, and one of the fast boats in the, uh, one of the... Now generally speaking, um, and, and there we do see Crew 9, some happy waves, smiles all around back on Earth. Starliner would compete with the SpaceX capsule, but this mission has thrown its development future into uncertainty. NASA's commercial crew program chief, Steve Stick, said on Tuesday that Starliner needs more tests before... Five, four, three, two, one, ignition, and liftoff of Starliner and Atlas V, carrying two American heroes, drawing a line to the stars for all of us. of 
Touchdown. Starliner is back on Earth. That landing coming at 11.01 and 35 seconds Central Time, 10.01 and 31 seconds Mountain Time at White Sand Space Harbor at the U.S. Army's Missile Range in New Mexico. Our landing and recovery teams will now wait for clearance before making their way to the space Three, two, one, ignition, ignition full power, and lift off. Uh, crew 9, go SpaceX, go Falcon, go NASA. Lift off of Crew 9, now soaring to the International Space Station. Stage 1, Alpha. Stage 1, Copy, hatch open. Oh, oh, oh. Freedom arriving. Followed by Peskov. Nicole Ayers, the first of the flies, newest class of astronauts to enter, and last commander of Crew 10 and McLean. On behalf of Expedition 72, I just want to say welcome to our new compadres from uh, uh, Dragon Freedom. Um, Alex, welcome to the International Space Station. And Nick, welcome back home to the International Space Station. It's great to be here with bringing the 72 back up to 11. People always ask about sleeping in space. Do you lie down? Are you in a bed? Um, not really, because it doesn't matter. You don't really have the sensation of lying down. You just sit in your sleeping bag. So here's one sleep station right here. I'm going in right now. You can follow me if you want. So I'm inside. It's sort of like a little phone booth, um, but it's pretty comfy. I've got a sleeping bag right here that we sleep in so we don't have a, sort of like a little bit of a cover. We don't fly all over the place. Um, but you know, you can sleep in any orientation. I have it sleeping, feeling like I'm standing up right now, but like you saw, I'm on the floor. But it doesn't matter if I turn over and I sleep upside down. I can't have it, I don't have any sensation in my head that tells me that I'm upside down. So it really doesn't matter. The sleep station is also like a little office. We've got a computer in here. As you can see, we've got a couple little toys. I've got some books. I've got some clothes and other things that make it sort of like home. I'm coming out. And just for reference, that's one sleep station. This one's another right here. There's one on the ceiling, if you want to call it, right here. And then there's a four. We're constantly doing experiments. We're constantly collecting data. We're constantly trying to answer questions. And usually that leads to more questions. The focus of the question, though, is what happens when you take gravity away? Because it's such a strong force, it masks lots of the nuances in different things that behave around us. And understanding those nuances helps us understand more about ourselves as well as the universe and how we interact with it. So we look at medicines, we look at materials and making new materials. We look at how we behave so that we know how medicines might interact with us or how to counteract diseases. You name it, we're doing research on it up here. We've had opportunities to do all sorts of science, uh, spacewalks. It's varied and pretty awesome, actually, opportunity to do something different every single day. You can see Butch Wilmore with the different canisters to collect those microorganism swaps. A great view from the helmet camera of NASA astronaut Nick Haig. You can see floating off just past that left hand of his. Those are the wedge-shaped nicer patches that he'll be inserting into the nicer experiment, the X-ray telescope. Anytime you look out the window, it's pretty amazing. The Aurora Borealis, the Aurora Australis, just to see the variety of the Earth from above, it's just thrilling. These are called astrobees. 
Um, so they uh, actually can come off the wall and fly around. Huge opportunities for people to test out guidance navigation control on a quote-unquote spacecraft in microgravity inside here. So we have companies, universities, students all flying these astro bees around at different times. Some of them are actually even grabbing onto other pieces that we might have floating around and that might help us clean up space debris. We have a tray right here that does some combustion experiments. Right on the other side of Butch is a glove box where we've done some stem cell research as well as DNA sequencing. And there's an airlock where it can take payloads out of the space station and those could be Earth observation satellites, they could be launchers of other micro satellites, they could be doing all sorts of amazing stuff. The mission of the space station, the scientific exploration is something that we deeply believe in and its ability to make a positive impact for all of you. Gulf of America um, off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. And splashdown, crew nine back on Earth.